This year is the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 launch, the mission that took the first astronauts to the moon's surface. When you play Kerbal Space Program, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, an engineer, or a math whiz. Anyone who's played a few hours ends up with a little different perspective when it comes to spacecraft. Every time I visit a place like the Saturn V Center at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, or see the actual Columbia Command Module at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, I always find myself wanting to rush home and create my own version in Kerbal. As it turns out, I'm not alone. The KSP community submitted some amazing videos with their own takes on Apollo 11. The first time I played it, I, I got all the way out to the moon and I'm like mm -hmm. flying around the moon and it's just, there's such a sense of accomplishment. Oh yeah. It's the craziest no, thing about a video game. The, the first time I managed to get two spacecraft to rendezvous successfully yeah. Was, yeah. was incredible. <laughs> like Jim and I. Right, you yeah. tossed it in the historical yeah, references, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I mean, Kerbal's a video game, but there's, there's such a sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. when you do something because it's not a game where you're just tapping a button to win. Right. right? It's not a game where you just, oh, just, just have to run through this level really quickly. You, you learn about how the real spacecraft operate. You learn about the maneuvers. You learn about Delta V and yeah. thrust and that sort of stuff. And then when you actually get your first craft into orbit or you get mm -hmm. that first spacecraft rendezvoused, it feels so good. Oh, yeah. It's Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. And one of the coolest things about Kerbal is the community. Oh, yeah. Where there are so many people that are willing to help answer questions, mm -hmm. sort of share what they've done, mm -hmm. share their experiences. Oh, maybe you could solve your problem by doing this. Um, unlike any other community that I've ever been a part of, it's amazing the number of people who want to sort of help everyone succeed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. everybody's sort of going towards this appreciation for space. Oh, absolutely. And we see this big resurgence, and the rocket flights are cool again, and there's all these people showing up, tourists watching launches and stuff. We see people coming to the museum. Mm -hmm. We have a fantastic mm -hmm. exhibit with all the mm -hmm. Apollo stuff. Um, but you have people playing the video game as one more way that you can appreciate or gain like an understanding mm -hmm. for cool space stuff. Oh yeah. The coolest thing about this is that you can put all this stuff in Kerbal. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Because we have the Gemini capsule mm -hmm. and you can see the two doors on top. Mm -hmm. And you can sort of understand, oh wow, that actually looks like it would hinge up and open up. Right. And then on, if you're building an Apollo uh, Saturn V, mm -hmm. you can put the command module on top and you can put it with the abort system on top. Mm -hmm. And you can build both of those rockets in Kerbal yeah. and understand the differences in the designs, the differences in, I don't know, the safety. You can program your own abort if you want. So when you crash something in Kerbal, mm -hmm. it doesn't end up looking like this. No, it just sort of vanishes on <laughs> it the... It disappears on the, uh, in a yeah, poof of yeah, smoke. Yeah. But in, real, in the real world, when a, a piece of a rocket mm -hmm. impacts the ocean going hundreds of miles per hour, it ends up like... Like this? this. Uh, so what are we looking at here? So what we're looking at here is we're looking at what remains of an F, a Saturn V F1 engine. So that's right. those, those big first okay. stage engines uh, after they've spent a little over 40 years on the bottom of the, the sea floor. The reason that I love looking at artifacts like this mm -hmm. and playing Kerbal is mm -hmm. that a lot of the things we have in Kerbal mm -hmm. are illustrated. Oh yeah. The, you, the, the parts of the rocket engine mm -hmm. are actually there in the mm -hmm. game. And you look at it and you're like, oh, that's a cool looking rocket engine, but mm -hmm. maybe you don't exactly understand the different right. parts of the rocket engine. So just all of these little ridges, you'll see it in Kerbal, right? Mm -hmm. You look at an engine and you're like, oh, it has little engine marks on mm -hmm. it, cool. Those marks are there because on the real rocket engines, they actually have an engineered system mm -hmm that cools the engine by feeding fuel through it. Yep. This is the actual mm -hmm. Columbia. Yep. Everything, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, and everything they brought back with them from uh, the moon on Apollo 11 had to fit inside. In this uh, capsule. In this capsule. Right here. Yep. This isn't like a mock-up. It's not a model. It's not a replica or anything like that. This is the actual piece of equipment that went around the moon. It is. It is. Another thing mm -hmm. that I appreciate in Kerbal, right, is the attention to detail on some of the parts. Oh, yeah. This command module is like the Mark II one command mm -hmm. module. Um, but it has gone through like a graphic update lately. Mm -hmm. And the original module didn't have a bunch of the features that you can see in the current version mm -hmm. of the part, like the thrusters. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. So it used to be that those thrusters were visible, mm -hmm. but they didn't actually do anything. Okay. Right? Yeah. But on the actual spacecraft, the holes in the side right there, mm -hmm. those are actual thrusters. They're like attitude control thrusters. Yep. Yep. Right? yep. And so 
it was before, like, you could have your little command module, you could be building it, but mm -hmm. if you wanted to be able to control it, you'd have to put extra little thrusters yep. on the side. Yep. And you'd actually have to take the thrusters, what are right, the quads, ones, like they're yep. on the back yep. of the, uh, the mm -hmm. CSM, the service module, or the little mm -hmm. quads like that. Right. But now the most recent version of the part has the actual thrusters built yeah. into it. Yeah. And you learn that because you load up the latest version of the game and then you're designing a spacecraft and you don't think about it. You put the thrusters right. on and you're like, oh, I need these. Yeah. And then there's magical RCS thrust coming out of a hole yeah. that it's never come out of before. Right. Like, wait, what? <laughs> Um, yeah. But I really appreciate in Kerbal whenever they go through and they, they put that level of detail mm -hmm. on the parts. Here we have, uh, this is Buzz Aldrin's uh, Apollo 11 spacesuit helmet and gloves. Flown. That he wore, flown, that he yeah. wore on the lunar surface that touched moon dust uh, and, and through which he looked with his own eyes. On Aldrin's uh, cuff. Like the gauntlet on the Yeah, those, the gauntlet yeah. on the glove, uh, there's actually instructions. There's a cheat sheet. A written, cheat sheet? Yeah, that was actually uh, printed into the fabric uh, really? for his instructions for the, the various steps uh, on his EVA. It's so, titled like stuff to do on moon. Right, yes, <laughs> exactly. Eat snacks. Um, eat snacks. Like, yeah. <laughs> go home. <laughs> go home. Eat snacks right. and go home. Right. When you build your own mission in KSP, you can try to make every thruster and fuel tank as perfect as possible. The cool thing is, you don't have to make an exact replica. You can change it up, get creative, hey, add more boosters. The amount of technical detail and creativity shown by the Kerbal Space Program community is awe-inspiring. Any way we play, we don't just launch Val and Jeb. We end up with a greater appreciation for the marvels of engineering that carry humans into space. From Kerbal fans everywhere, Happy 50th anniversary to the historic Apollo program, humankind's first reach to touch new worlds. <laughs>